Hello everyone, welcome to another video of MIDAS short video series. My name is Rohit Joseph and I am a technical support engineer at MIDAS IT. In this video, I will be briefly explaining the geometric nonlinear analysis of suspension bridges. My major focus will be on the suspension bridge analysis control feature of MIDAS Civil. This will be the agenda for today's session. First, the introduction what is geometric nonlinear analysis and what makes it different from linear analysis followed by what exactly does a suspension bridge analysis control do and the cable element and its applications the assumption of linear behavior is valid in most structures the primary assumption being that the, all the deformation coming on to the structure is very small however a structure requires nonlinear analysis in case of excessive stresses or large displacements. Majorly nonlinear analysis can be classified into three geometric analysis non nonlinearity, where large deformation or deflections in the structure is considered while calculating the stiffness of elements. Second, the material nonlinearity, where the behavior of the material beyond the elastic limit is considered for analysis. And the third one is the contact where the boundary conditions changes so in this video i'll be focusing more on the geometric nonlinearity. so let's take an example of a cable in a suspension bridge or a cable state bridge it undergoes large deformation during construction stages and we have to do geometric nonlinearity, nonlinear analysis for analyzing the cable structures so what is geometric nonlinear analysis Rather than what is geometric nonlinear analysis, let's see when it is considered. So, geometric nonlinear analysis is carried out when a structure undergoes large displacement, especially when the displacements are larger than the original dimensions of the element cross section. And the change of its geometric shape renders a nonlinear displacement strain relationship. Let's see what all criteria are considered during geometric nonlinear analysis. So the first one is change in structural stiffness due to large displacement. For example, let's take a case of a cable. So when a cable is fully loaded or when it is in complete tension, the stresses or the stiffness of the cable element will be much more higher when compared to a position where it is not loaded or, and it is in a sag position. The next one will be the additional load induced due to large displacement. So in the second figure, we can see that there is a column which is having a horizontal force H and a vertical force P. If we consider the large def deformation or the displacement due to horizontal force H, then additional moments will be generated in the structure due to vertical force V. Or else it will be, if we are not considering them, it will be just acting like a axial load. The last one is, in some cases when the geometry changes, the, the direction of the load also changes. We consider those conditions also during geometric nonlinear analysis. So what makes geometric nonlinear analysis different from linear analysis? So for better understanding, let's take an example of a simple truss as shown below. So we have a truss which is having a length L0, pin support, supported at bottom and the roller is provided at the top a vertical force p is applied at the roller position because of the vertical force p a vertical deflection of w is observed and due to this change in deformation another axial force n is developed in the truss element so in linear analysis we assume that the w vertical deflection is almost negligible and the axial force after deformation n is almost equal to n zero but during geometric nonlinear analysis, we consider two different equilibrium equations, one before deformation and one after deformation. So the stiffness of the element according to geometric nonlinearity is formulated as shown below. We can see that we, it has three components, K0, KL and K sigma. So K0 is same as that of linear analysis. KL and K sigma reflects the change in stiffness due to geometric shape. So a linear analysis is performed first for a given loading condition and then a new geometric stiffness matrix is formulated based on the member forces or stresses obtained from the first analysis. The geometric stiffness matrix is thus repeatedly modified and used to perform subsequent static analysis 
until the given convergence conditions are satisfied. Now let's see what exactly does a suspension bridge analysis control do. Let's consider an example of a pearl, a chain of pearls or a bead. So if we apply a 100 kN or some point load at the center or at the sag position, the shape of the, the elements or the beads shifts into something that we see in the second figure. It will be in the, it will be in the shape of a B and this catenary shape will be changed to a B position. This is exactly what a suspension bridge analysis control do. It changes the coordinates of the entire cable system and it calculates the initial forces according to geometric nonlinearity that is it considers the large displacement as well as the small displacement forces. Let's move to the software. For demonstration purpose, I have considered cable elements which is having a catenary shape. These are all tension only elements or cable elements. I have assigned a point load of 100 kN at the tag position. I have given two structure groups. One is for nodes to be updated. So I want all these nodes to get updated. I have provided another node at the top also. I will explain it later. So again, I have given the top node as a SAC node. We have to make sure that all these the SAC nodes should be included in the nodes to be updated. So the nodes will be updated in such a way that the SAC point will be kept static that it won't be moved and accordingly all the other nodes will be changed. So to show that the effect when we apply a point load in a pearl of beads, we will be getting a V shape. So for that, I have considered the SAC point at top. Let's go to the analysis, suspension bridge analysis control. I have given the number of iterations as 10, the initial force and optimization approach. I'll be going for the initial force. Here, update nodes to be updated and the SAC point. I have considered the nodal load, that is the 100 kN for to be considered. Click on OK. Let's perform the analysis. Now you can see that the shape, the coordinates of the element has been changed to that of the desired shape or the expected shape. Let's see what all changes is provided. We can see a nonlinear analysis data is shown here. So automatically the software considers a geometric nonlinear analysis for calculating the large displacement forces. So considering the large displacement forces, initial forces will be calculated. So these forces are considered during the construction stages. Apart from that, a small displace, considering the small displacement of the structure, they have to have taken the initial forces. So these are the forces that will be taken for linear analysis. This will be used for the completed state analysis, and this will be used for the uh, for the construction stages. The uh, considering the large displacement. Now I'll take another example just for showing. So this is a suspension bridge can see the groups we have to create two groups one is a structure group for nodes to be updated now another group that is the sad points so we can select all the elements i will be just considering the center portion i just need the nodes so Dependent. Select previous. Drag and drop. Likewise, the sag points. Drag and drop. Then let's go to analysis control. Suspension bridge analysis control. Number of iterations. I am taking it as ten. Nodes to be updated. Sag points. If we have any horizontal force on the cable, we can provide that also. Here I am considering the sulfate or add. Click on OK. Let's perform the analysis. So automatically all the coordinates will be rearranged according to the forces provided or the considered forces. We can see the large displacement forces considering the geometric nonlinearity and also the small displacement. 
I hope this is clear. Now let's see how the cable elements are considered during linear analysis and for nonlinear geometric nonlinear analysis. So you can see that a geom considering the geometric nonlinearity, the cable forces were calculated. Apart from that, considering the linear analysis or the small displacement also, the cable element, the forces in the cable elements were calculated. Let's see how it is done. So for the for the linear analysis, the cable elements will be converted to equivalent truss elements to consider the sag effects. The sag effect has a softening effect on the cable stiffness, so that this results in a non-linear force displacement relationship. For large values of sag, the cable has a relatively low stiffness. As the sag decreases, the cable stiffness decreases and the behavior of the cable comes close to a truss bar tension element. So you can see that this is the combined force, this is the elastic force Ea by L and this is due to the gay sag is due to the sag effect of the cable. So cable will be completely converted to a equivalent truss element for linear analysis. Now in the nonlinear analysis the cable elements are converted to an elastic catenary elements to consider the tangential stiffness. So cables are capable of transmitting axial forces only. Apart from that, it reflexes the stiff, the change in stiffness varying in internal tension forces. That is a sag effect. The tangential stiffness of cable element applied to the geometric nonlinear analysis. So this large displacement effect will be added to the linear analysis. So this is how the stiffness of the cable elements is formulated for nonlinear analysis. So I hope this session was very useful. Stay tuned for more interesting videos. Thank you.